it's from the New York Times. Uh, and it's interesting in that um, there's been lots of people skeptical about uh, autonomous vehicles. And I've certainly been one of them. Um, and one of the things that has sort of been unsaid about autonomous vehicles is how that's going to change our infrastructure. Um, and I think most people's assumption is I'm going to get a magic car. I'm going to tell it where to go and it's going to go wherever it wants. And as we're finding out, as AV developers are getting further and further towards a hundred percent goal and finding that last few percentage points, right? The, the hardest ones, the almost intractable yes. problems, which pretty typical kind of problem solving development curve. Um, we're hearing from AV developers that, well, they just need little changes, little tweaks in the infrastructure. Uh, this particular article suggested that there would be gates on all the streets that would hold the pedestrians back, physically <laughs> hold them back. So they didn't get in the way of the autonomous vehicles when the autonomous vehicles had the right of way. Uh, this is sort of a, an, uh, an old spin or a new spin on an old thing, which is jaywalkers. Jaywalkers are evil and jaywalking is an interesting crime. The idea that like human pedestrians somehow are less important than humans in auto and uh, automobiles is it always been an interesting concept to me. Um, California where I live certainly, uh, you know, has taken that uh, another step where pedestrians always have the right of way. Uh, although that's less and less true than it used to be. I got to tell you being back here now, you get in the wrong street, you're dead meat here. Uh, there's a lot of people in a hurry these days. Anyway, um, and I thought this is sort of another strike of, on autonomous vehicles. Will this problem be solved? Someday, maybe. But I think it's a lot further away than most people really appreciate. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting you say about the, the gates, that uh, this is like, a, so... So people are blocked in until the autonomous vehicle goes by or until, say, a light turns green, people are behind the gate and have to follow that that particular order that they got to stay behind the gate or behind a barrier uh, before the light changes. But uh, that that's interesting. It, it, it doesn't it doesn't work in practical means. Like, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Install gates along the entire length of uh, a road? Like that's not going to happen. The cost would be crazy, uh, just just the cost. Let alone people hopping the gates and running across, anyways. But so if the uh, gate is up and you go around it, you're liable. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, regardless, you still have people hopping gates. Like uh, yeah. what that reminds me of, uh, say uh, downtown Las Vegas or the Strip in Las Vegas, where they put up actual cement barricades along the roadside. And force everyone into escalators that go up and across the roads. Yeah. So there's there's not not only that there's there's iron gates there's everything that blocks people from even stepping foot onto a road. You have to go up an escalator and cross every road in that fashion. But you know, it's I, I thought what I took away is interesting is the fact that they, you know. The reason they think the gates would be necessary is because of the learned behavior of humans recognizing that since, you know, when when a car is driven by a human that might be texting on their cell phone, they might not notice them jaywalking and smash right into them and kill them. But then suddenly they when it's autonomous vehicles, they gain this confidence. Well, fuck it. They're not going to crash into yeah. me because it's controlled by a computer that will always stop. And then there will be, you know, uh, this, you know, instead of people waiting patiently to cross as soon as the first person stepped out everybody's just going to follow along like sheep and they're going to continually block the roadways because they know these cars are never going to hit them and they have no obligation to stop or at least with a gate you know maybe get one idiot that's going to jump in and say screw it i don't really care but you're probably not going to get you know everybody in their you know business suits uh jump in the gate um, at the same time to accomplish that. So just like the barricades in, in uh, Las Vegas, you can jump the barricade, and I'm sure people do, but the vast majority of people recognize that as a means of of corralling them into a certain area so that the flow of traffic can do what the flow of traffic is supposed to do and the flow of humans can do what the flow of humans is supposed to do. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's interesting theory. I don't, I don't know if it would actually get that 
bad, chaotic. I don't know. What if Maybe you get would. stuck on the other side and like like a like a animal drowning in a pool? Like a <laughs> <laughs> You're on the wrong side of the gate, try <laughs> I'm going back on the sidewalk. <laughs> Mad Max comes barreling down. <laughs> you ought to design communities, Casey. That's all I have to say. So <laughs> communities that I never even want to visit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think the thing to really think about here is, is again, aside from the important uh, point that Evan brings up, which the phrase transformative societal changes from that article sticks in my head. But uh, keep in mind the things that we're going to have to do, there's going to be a cost to them and they're going to be significant. Standardization of signs, standardization of markings and things like that so that autonomous vehicles don't have to literally know everything in the world. Um, you know, right now we're used to putting up a signboard or some cones or something else, and that may or may not work. Those things are going to have to adapt if we're going to have autonomous vehicles that are less than 100% on the road. Yeah, and, so, and I think that's true. And not only having signs that are consistent, but, you know, probably highway markers, your orange road code, cone, are probably going to have to have a chip in them that yeah. talks to the cars. And, and the cars are able to sense that they're what's going on and it provides direction and instruction of where to go and what to do. I, you know, I think there's a lot and, and it is transformative, but, you know, ultimately it, it's going to be safer, right? It, there's going to be a lot of aches and pains getting there. But um, when, when the road cones can talk to your car and other cars can talk to your car and street lights can talk to your car and they can all work together, I, I, it, it's got to be better, right? I mean, at yeah. some point. So Too I saw people dying. Yeah, or does, or does it all just become noise? I don't think it'll become like, noise. I think it's going to be a while before they can all talk together. It's going to be a lot of individual things can talk to this, but it can't talk to that. And uh, yeah. Yeah. this, this thing uh, partially talks, but not completely. Like, yeah. I can see that there's no way a standardization is going to come out of the gate with them all yeah. talking. Oh, to no, each no, other. absolutely. I mean, we can't even get standardized EV charging, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. so, thought... so again, there's a lot. I think there's so much more stuff than we really fully appreciate that's going to have to change. And, I, and this brings me to my ultimate point in bringing this up. What we need are less cars on the road, yeah. more mass transit options that don't involve drivers and that will also make things safer. When we're spending billions on infrastructure, that's a huge part of where that money should go, in my opinion. How are you going to change the world to do that? <laughs> I'm going to change well, the world to make it safe for AVs. Yeah. Uh, I just, it's, it's the personal mobility that's driving this. I, yeah. I cannot see people giving up their cars to drive a better mass transit system. Five thirty. 530. Whoa. It's 530. It's 530, <laughs> everybody. Um, so to beat the traffic. Yeah, that autonomous uh, time piece <laughs> yeah. there. I, I, I think that's a fair point, Mark. I definitely, I'm not ignoring the idea that the seismic change that this, that I'm suggesting, I would suggest that there was a time in our society's life when you took the train or you rode a horse. Yep. Yeah. And personal mobility wasn't the entitlement that it is today. I'm not saying that, that cars are bad. I'm saying cars are the problem. And part of the thing that we should be working on is putting less vehicles on the road, not just smarter and safer vehicles, but fewer vehicles on the road that will make them safer and giving people options that are very safe. Some dude driving a train, and then of course something horrible happens, and my whole life. <laughs> but yeah, that's not really a strong anti-argument, in my opinion. So I, I think that this computer ability to navigate is going to surprise us with, because it's going to feel like it was overnight. Because we see how bad they are today, and like you said, it's going to take a long time before all of the edge cases are ironed out. But uh, but but yeah, so the Russell's point you know there are too many you know we've built our society around cars there are too many of them and i think that uh having less of them will make it easier for the computer and having them 
be driven by the computer and like the, the fleet concept will make it so there's just less of them even more so. But you will have a revolt on your hands trying to limit the amount of cars that are on the oh, road. You can't, you can't limit it. you got to have, have it be an incentive for them to want yeah. to choose to do that. Yeah, because yeah. uh, this the personal freedom aspect of it is so weaved into it at this point that you can't separate it. Yeah. Things change. I get that it's a huge change. I definitely am in no way ignoring or not acknowledging that. But I think it's a change that we can make for the better. And if that's shared vehicles or autonomous vehicles or whatever, the fewer number of individually owned vehicles in the long term, the better. So somebody brought up a point. They said that uh, children born today will be as likely to drive themselves and know how to drive themselves as um people today are to know how to drive a manual transmission automobile. Yeah. We'll see. Mm-hmm.